Hey friends, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to take a look at something you've been asking for for a bit, which is pairing Touch OSC on a tablet device with OBS. So we're finally taking a look at Touch OSC with OBS and kind of what's been taking us this long to get here is that uh, there were two issues. One, you could already do this with keystrokes. Uh, of course, that was difficult on some systems, but with Windows, you could have set up a keystroke message in Touch OSC. So you push a button and you send Control Shift L, for example, and maybe you set up your hotkeys in OBS and that sends your uh, first scene or it mutes audio, whatever you set it to. Uh, you could have had those hotkeys set up and that's great. But this uh, software, this OSC for OBS has existed, but for the longest time you needed the WebSocket plugin for OBS. But now with version 28 of OBS, it's integrated into the download. So all you need is just OBS version 28 at least, and then this OSC to OBS software is the in-between and then you're using touch OSC to send these messages. So that's why we're taking a look at this now, uh, specifically because we no longer need two in-between uh, devices or plugins as it were uh, to make this connect. So let's take a look at what you're gonna need after you download uh, OBS 28, which has WebSocket in it, uh, you're gonna need this. So I have the link in the description for the video, but you're gonna go ahead to GitHub and download OSC for OBS. It's a really extensive program with a lot of different applications and a lot of different commands. Now, if you're familiar with my video that I did about the other third party OSC software, which was Zoom OSC for Touch OSC, uh, that had a lot of different commands and too much to cover in one video. So just like that, we're gonna break this up a little bit uh, and just take a look at setting it up and doing a few simple things today, and we'll add more as we go. So at this point, I assume you've downloaded OBS 28, you've got OSC for OBS, and you've got Touch OSC. So let's jump in and connect the devices, and then we'll build our template. So if this is your first time looking at Touch OSC, you probably wanna jump back to one of my earlier videos that shows how this is all set up. Uh, but assuming you've got your tablet device ready to go, head up here and let's make sure the editor network is enabled. And on your tablet device, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and select the network and connect to your desktop. And as usual, I like to edit on the desktop editor and then we'll send that to the tablet to use uh, because it's too much work to build a template uh, on the device. So the first thing we're gonna do is control some scenes. So let's make a button and we're gonna get rid of uh, the background here, make this a little bit bigger and let's add the outlines and those can be just the corners. And this is gonna be our first scene. So we're gonna make three different scenes. So you can go ahead and take this button, copy that, paste that, and then let's make these different colors. And let's go ahead and add a label. So we don't need the background, we don't need the outline. And this first one, what we're gonna call this we're gonna call our scenes just scene one. And then we'll put this in here. Let's copy that. And then we're gonna make scene two. And then last one is scene three. So when we push these buttons, it's going to show this in the preview. It's not gonna send it live, but it will at least put it in preview. And now let's make buttons to set this live. So go ahead, right click, add a button. And this one, I do wanna keep the background because I want this to be really obvious that it's going live. And let's get another label. And we'll call this scene one. 
Actually, let's call this live. I mean, we already know it's scene one, right? And then we're gonna get rid of the outlines. So now let's duplicate this for the other two scenes. Great, so when we push this button here, it'll put our uh, scene that we selected in the preview, and then we push this button here, it will go live. Also, if we had one of these in preview and we push this button, this will automatically go live. So that's the way this works. And then next, let's make a transition button. So one more button and let's make this nice and big. Make this yellow and then let's add a label. Get rid of the background, the outlines, and this is gonna be transition. Now you'll see how we'll use all of this once we get it live, uh, but we're just building this out. So what we're gonna do in order to do this, we need to add an OSC message. And here on the GitHub, there are tons of different messages that you can send. They do a really nice job of organizing this and making it somewhat clear uh, for what you need to send to make anything work. So what we're gonna do to pull up our scene is let's go down here and add a message. So hit this plus here, OSC message. And if you wanted, you could change these names. Um, it's the default name right now, but let's get rid of this stuff in this message. And here on the address, we're gonna send a constant. So it's gonna be slash preview and then capital scene and then slash scene underscore one. And the way this works is that preview scene is the action that's being called that's communicating with OSC to OBS. And then scene underscore one is the name of the scene we're calling. So if you had a scene that was called wide angle or camera or TV, it would be preview scene slash TV or slash whatever the name of your scene is. So now that message, we're gonna add that to these other two scenes to preview. So we add an OSC message, get rid of these, and then we add our constant. Now, one thing to note is that the scenes are scene one, and there's a space in between there, but OSC doesn't understand that, so you need to use an underscore for any spaces. Now to make this go live, what we're gonna do, we're gonna select this button and we're gonna add a message. Uh, if you have a MIDI message on there, you can get rid of that, you don't need that. And what we will add is slash scene, because that's what we're telling it to do, and then we'll tell it which scene we're calling, which is gonna be scene underscore one. And now same process as before, we're gonna add that to these other two buttons. And then here for transition, what we're gonna add is a, no, a new message. And that is gonna be, again, it's just a constant. So we select here and slash studio and then capital transition. And that's it. So now that we have this to set up and test, let's go ahead and run OSC for OBS. So this is what it looks like. Um, it's an interesting little screen here. Sometimes it'll show up with the developer tools. If that's the case, uh, they can kind of get in the way with this menu. So you can just go to view and then toggle them off, which makes it easier. So these are the default, and what you're gonna need to do is change some of these settings. So you're also gonna need to set these for your template. So taking a look in our Touch OSC template here on our device, on our tablet here, if we hit the link, you can see I have a lot of different things set up for different devices, but what we're gonna set up 
is the host connection, which this is going to my desktop, and then the send port being 3333, and the receive port being 53,000. So these are the things you're gonna to wanna to set up. Additionally, you're gonna to need to set your IP address in this box here. And this is the IP address of your iPad. And figuring out your IP address for your tablet, whether it's connected via a direct cable, USB cable, or a Wi-Fi signal, you're gonna to have to figure out that IP address on your own because it is unique to you. So once you get that figured out, go ahead and plug that into OSC for OBS. And then we're gonna take a look at OBS because we're gonna to need to set some things up in there. So here in OBS, we have quite a few things. And if you're not familiar with OBS, definitely check it out. It is extremely powerful and really cool to use. Um, but what we need to go check out is up here in tools, OBS WebSocket settings. So you can see just like what we had on our OSC controls, OSC for OBS, you can see that it's uh, the IP address is set and then 4455, right? Which is what we need here. But we need a different password because this is not the real password. So you're gonna go to show connect info and then you're gonna copy the password and then we will put that here. And then we also need to change our IP address to the correct address for OSC to OBS to connect to. The next thing is in order to have any feedback on your template, if you want to uh, mute something on your OBS uh, you know, studio and you want that to also mute on your tablet, you're gonna to need to make sure this is enabled. So you're gonna to want to enable feedback and then you're good to go. So then from here, all we have to do is connect. If you get that green light, you are connected to OBS. And here in OBS, you can see I've got a few different scenes called scene one, scene two, scene three, and that's why we needed to use that uh, different underscore as opposed to a space. So here in OBS Studio, you can see we've got uh, scene one is showing and we could click scene two. You can see I'm recording in Reaper. Also up here, it shows you what is preview and what is actually live. Here on our template, let's go ahead and hit uh, live for scene one. And you can see that uh, sends it here. And let's pull up scene two. So if I hit that top green button, if I hit the top red button, you can see it pulls it up on the left side and then if you push it uh, on the bottom to go live, it sends it to program. And this is super useful. So also if you pull up scene one and you don't wanna hit live or let's say you just wanna transition to scene one and now you can transition back. So that transition button all it does is send things back and forth between these two, which is nice and helpful. So as you can see, this is super easy to integrate adding these OSC messages. Let's add a couple more to control OBS. So let's go ahead and add a fader. Right click add a fader, we'll make this a little bit bigger. And this is going to be for uh, something we'll call audio. So let's go ahead and add a label. And like I said, we're just gonna call this audio. Now you could call this anything depending on what you have, but of course this is just an easy example. So we're just going to call it audio. So when we move this fader, it'll impact OBS. And then let's also add a mute button. Actually, we can move this guy up here. And this, let's add another label for this. We'll get rid of the background, get rid of the outlines and we'll call this mute. Now a mute button, it's great to have as a toggle. So when we select this button here, we're going to change this to toggle press and we're going to add some messages. So we have an OSC message here and what we're gonna add, we can get rid of this and here in our constant, we're going to add capital audio and then slash audio toggle. 
And the capital audio, that first part, is the name of the audio feed. So if it was called microphone, or if it was called uh, person one, whatever you call it, that would be the name of this. And then audio toggle is the message we're sending. And then the last part, the argument we need, this is gonna be Boolean. And make sure that's zero one. So when we push this, it's gonna mute things. And when uh, also we push it on OBS, it will show up muted here. For our fader here, let's add an OSC message. So what we're gonna add, let's get rid of name. And then here in the constant, we're going to put in audio. Again, that's the name of the uh, device. And then slash volume, pretty simple. And then what we're gonna have controlling that, the argument, this is gonna be a float with zero one. And that's all it's gonna take. So let's go back into OBS. So here in OBS, if we move that fader up and down, we can control it. And then if we move it with the mouse, we can also control it. Same with the mute button. So that is a pretty quick and easy way to use Touch OSC with OBS. And of course you can have unlimited scenes. The new version of OBS is much friendlier to the eye to look around and see the kind of color coding that happens for your scenes. Uh, so you can set all of that up and send it all out with your uh, Touch OSC template. So like I said, there are a lot more actions for us to cover uh, and a lot of those are laid out and explained in that GitHub page. Uh, so go ahead and check those out and we'll jump into more. Hopefully you've learned something today. You can like this video and subscribe to the channel. We have lots more to cover when we're talking about OSC with a variety of different devices. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.